Sergeant Argybrite here, and today we're reacting to another video, and this one is called Cold War Oversimplified Part 1. So, yeah, let's just start watching. I don't think this is loud enough. Wait a second. There. Boom. The new Minimalist and Cold War merch available now. And get the new limited edition Trick Show character pin before it sells out, with more characters coming in the future. I don't think that's what he looks like, but let's Link continue. Link in the description down below. Here, 1917. Fighting rages on the eastern front of the... Wait a minute. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, the map looks pretty okay. Good job. Fighting rages on the eastern I'm front proud. of the First World War. Both Germany and Russia are on the brink of collapse. Soldier, I need you to bring me this man. Got it. Found him, sir. No, not Lenin. Lenin. Oh Russia. yeah. Oh, okay. It's gonna talk about communism. And how it leads up to this first the the the, the Cold War, yeah, whatever it's called. Communist. Because they had to send like, you know, Lenin to St. Petersburg. He like or Petrograd at the time. And he, you know, started the uh, communist revolution in Russia and all that. What? Why would I need a beetle? Lenin, the Russian communist. He was exiled to Switzerland. Well, I don't even think this guy was alive back then. <laughs> You know what? I'll do it myself. Capitalism by Karl Marx. Okay. Who wants to start a revolution? Oh my god. But why did Switzerland let them do that? I'm confused about that. Oh, there's a mistake. You see, okay, hold on. You see these islands right here, by the way? Okay, look where my mouse is. So these little islands, by the way, they're islands. It doesn't show that they are, but in real life, they are islands. And at this point in time, I think they're part of Sweden, not Russia. Crisis, and create an internal crisis they did. The government yes. was overthrown, and Lenin was in charge. He immediately pulled out of the First World War, made the country communist, started a three-year-long civil war, got Not immediately. Shot, broke the economy, caused the famine, and then he died. Oh, yeah. On his deathbed, he said, Hey, man, tell whoever's in charge of giving people jobs not to let that jerk Stalin become the next leader. By and the way, who did I put in charge of giving people jobs? That would be Stalin, sir. Oh, no. <sighs> Stalin was a rising force in the oh, Communist no. Party. He still had some opponents, but conveniently, all of them were arrested or disappeared. Huh, wonder what happened with that. So that was lucky. And so Stalin yes. took over. He implemented his five-year plan, which transformed the country from an agriculture-based economy to an industrial one, and like Lenin before him. Yes, and also caused, like, millions of people to die. Reigned with terror. Anyone who dared criticize... This map is not... Right. This is. Oh my gosh! I don't. Okay, Russia never. Okay, Russia looked like this in 1939. Okay, that's the only time they looked like this be right before they invaded Finland. That's no, they didn't even look like this at all. What? What is this supposed to be? Okay, these are all the mistakes. Um, I'll just pretend it's 1939 before the invasion of Finland. Bemel, right there, that doesn't make any sense. And that little area doesn't make any sense. Criticize or oppose him would either be killed or left to rot in the horrendous Soviet work camp. And what's that? What is that? That's just, no. Then a short man with a silly mustache tried to take over the world, punched the Russians all, all the way to Moscow, and then the Russians, with some help from... Wait, let's look at this map. 
I know I keep doing this, but that's just what I like to do because I don't like bad maths. Oh, Greece was a puppet state of Italy. Yeah. And Memel, I don't know why they keep not giving Memel to Germany because Memel was part of Germany. By the way, Memel is part of Lithuania now, if y'all know that. And also, what about Finland's? Why does it not show Finland's contributions? And by the way, Finland didn't look like that because um, Russia took a bunch of their land. From their faithful ally, the winter punched them all the way back. No! Shut up! Mm, mm. Okay. I just did a video. By the way, I don't think this is loud enough. I don't think I've, this video has been loud enough at all. No, it was not the winter. I mean, maybe, like... The winter it's itself did not push the Germans back. It was a combination of a lot of things, mostly, like, logistics and lack of resources. Um... Yeah, I just did a video debunking... Well, I was reacting to a video debunking seven common Red Army misconceptions. Check that out, it's very interesting. And also, an another mistake, whenever <clears throat> Germany did invade the Soviet Union, Poland, they, or general government, that's what they called it, they took this little area right there. And Romania took that area, too. Berlin. At this point, being allies, America, the UK, and the Soviet Union were good chums. They held a couple of conferences near the end of the war to decide that. what would happen next. Hey, Stalin, after all your trials and tribulation, you must be pretty happy to be standing here in Berlin. Tsar Alexander made it all the way to Paris. What? Uh, hey, uh, just, just give me a second. Hey, man, I think something's up with Stalin. I know, right? What should we do? Shall I tell him? And also that, whenever they said that, they were all chum. They were all, like, friends or whatever. That's completely wrong. It was so much tension throughout the entire war. What about the bomb? Yeah, tell him about the bomb. That will scare him. So, we got this crazy new big A-bomb that can destroy an entire city in one go. Yes, my spies told me already. Oh, wait. I meant to act surprised. Wow, that's amazing. He already knew. How? Um... Am I sure I want to send nuclear secrets via unsecure public coffee shop Wi-Fi? Um, they're gonna come. They're gonna come with this like VPN ad. Am I ever? Dude, it's a VPN. And speaking of VPNs, it's yeah, they do. They do. They always do Nord VPN in literally every single video. So I, I can like predict it now. Like me, if you take internet safety seriously, then you need Nord VPN. Nord VPN hides your online activity from outside intruders, preventing anyone from stealing your personal data. Stopping your service provider selling your data to advertisers. With over 5,000 servers in 62 countries, it allows you to surf the net anonymously and securely. And it's simple to use. With just the click of a button, you can connect to a server halfway across the world, even allowing... This map is outdated. Um, South Sudan is independent from Sudan. And why is the West Sahara not independent from that country that has a really long name that starts with an M? Sorry, I can't. I, I don't know what that name is, but yeah, this map is very bad. You to access streaming services from that specific territory. Say, for example, you wanted to watch a certain oversimplified video that for some reason has been blocked in your country. With NordVPN, you can. It works seamlessly across PC, mobile, and tablet. Go to nordvpn.com slash oversimplified to get an amazing 75% off. Thank that's you, NordVPN. $2.99 per month with an additional month free for a limited time. So again, that's nordvpn.com slash oversimplified, also in the description box down below. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Does the A stand for atomic or ass? Then America dropped their big A-bomb on Japan and World War II dropped two. Two officially came to an end. Hooray, we won. Okay, so now it's time to establish the new world order. Stalin, you're in charge of Eastern Europe. Now, we want you to let them all hold elections. Oh, yes, of course. Elections. And these elections will be free and fair, right? Oh, yes, certainly. Free and fair. Sure. Definitely free yes, and fair. Definitely communist, happened. communist, 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 communist. If that's not free and fair, I don't know what it is. <laughs> what? 
That's literally what happened in real life. Hold on. The rep communist communist. Oh yes, certainly. Free and fair. Definitely free and fair. Communist, 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 communist. If that's not free and fair, I don't know what is. Throughout Eastern Europe, Soviet puppet governments and if were established as a buffer zone between the USSR and By the way, um Yugoslavia and Albania, they were communist countries. But they weren't puppets of Stalin like all these other countries were. Just want to make that clear. In the West, with Churchill proclaiming an Iron Curtain had descended across the continent, the relationship between the old allies was deteriorating fast. Over the next few years, the British intervened in the Greek Civil War to prevent a oh, communist yeah. takeover. In Turkey, the Russians began demanding more control of Turkey's sea access route, which prompted the U.S. to send their largest battleship to Turkey for a friendly visit. After World War II, Iran was now occupied by both the Soviets and the British, with an agreement meant to both pull out once the war was over. The British pulled out. Stalin was like, you know what? I think I might stick around. All in favor of kicking Russia out of Iran? You want to know something? You guys suck. Pressure from the UN forced the Soviets to leave. And with the establishment of NATO, the Soviets had no doubt that the West was out to encircle and destroy them. And America announced the Truman Doctrine, in which they basically said, those guys are not cool, cannot be trusted, and we will do everything we can to prevent the spread of communism around the world. Many view this moment as the official declaration of the Cold War. Back in Europe, everyone was living in a post-apocalyptic void brought on by the Second World War. Cities reduced to rubble, not enough food. It was terrible. This is great. The more they suffered, the more likely it is they'll turn to communism. What? You're really messed up. But honestly, that's how dictators were. I think I watched this video earlier, um, by Economics Explained, and it told and um, it basically said that dictators would want their people to suffer more, so that they'll you know support them, which is a weird, but. With democratic countries, the leaders want their people, like, democratic leaders want their people to be more successful, so that way they'll be more likely to vote for them next time. Because in democratic countries, there's, you know, competition, while in uh, dictatorships, there's no competition at all. What's wrong with you? My father used to punish me severely. America mm. realized what was going on and quickly made a move. Under the Marshall Plan, they sent $12 billion to Western Europe for its economic recovery. The countries of Stalin's Eastern Bloc looked on with envy. Hey, Czechoslovakia, you want to come get some economic aid? Yeah, but I have to check with my mom first. My God. Sorry, America. I can't come. This was a full-on <laughs> economic battle raging between capitalism and communism. Europe. If the Western nations developed faster and better than the East, that would be a defeat for Stalin. I wish they would have talked about the um, how all the Germans from Eastern Europe were exiled. Uh, it just seems like no one talks about that, and it sort of kind of you know makes sense. So he set up his own rival economic recovery plan, which he called Comic Con, and he also set up Common Form, which gave him more political control over the Eastern Bloc. But nowhere did. Yeah, thank you for at least adding that. This economic battle rage harder than in the city of Berlin. Caught over a hundred miles behind Soviet lines, the city had been divided up between the Allies, and the Western segments were still under Western control. East Berliners could travel freely to West Berlin, see the economic prosperity, and think, hmm. This communism thing ain't so great after all. I'm gonna have fun tonight. You're home late. Oh, oh no. Stalin, uh, I was just out with my friends. Friends? You stink of capitalism. You're out engaging in imperialist debauchery again. I swear, <laughs> Ivan, I can't keep doing it. Stalin wanted the West out. <laughs> what? So he said, hey, guess what? I'm blockading all of your supply routes to West Berlin. What are you gonna do about it? I suppose you can supply the supplies in. The Berlin airlift was an incredible undertaking and a major success yes, for the Western that's Allies. Yes, basically and what happened. His blockade of West Berlin. His aggressive actions worried the West, but not as much as this did. Oh yeah. The Soviet Union had developed their very own atomic bomb. 1948, right? Oh. 
company is awarded subject to Section 1 of the Act, and so it was something in challenging that has awarded him several units in the West for the license. Yes. Oh, wait, inevitable. Okay, it was inevitable. What? Hey, you know. Why would you say that? You know who I haven't checked in on in a while? My good friend, China. Whoa, what happened to you? What civil War. What happened to them was a full blown civil war that had been going on since 1927. Uh, no. No, 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 no. The bet was independent. The People's Liberation Army, under the leadership of Mao Zedong, successfully defeated the Republic. Oh my gosh, his hair looks ridiculous. Republic of China, who fled to Taiwan. The now Communist China and the Soviet Union signed a mutual defense treaty. This was terrible news for the West. But oh, wait. There's more. After the Second World War, Korea was divided along the 38th parallel. Oh, in the yeah. north, the Soviets set up a communist regime. In the south, America set up an anti-communist regime. Both were led. Yeah, the thing, the thing that's interesting is North Korea. They, you know, obviously nowadays they get this reputation for being really poor, because you know South Korea is multiple times more rich than North Korea, but. North Korea, they have a lot more natural resources, and they're bordered by, like, these really powerful allies, too. Yet, South Korea ends up doing much better than North Korea. Right. Very sweet-looking old men. But don't let that deceive you. They were both ruthless dictators, and both dreams of reuniting Korea under their own regime. Now that he had the bomb, Stalin was feeling a little more cocky, and he finally gave Kim permission to attack. What was the point of that... Peacock thing. The North launched a surprise invasion of the South on June 25th, 1950. With Soviet aid, the North Koreans steamrolled through, taking Seoul in just three days and replacing one Dang. ruthless dictator with another. The UN were freaking out and quickly created an emergency force made up of troops from 16 countries to defend the South. The West still held the South and made landings at Incheon near Seoul. They pushed the North Koreans out of Seoul, replacing the ruthless dictator that had replaced the first ruthless dictator with the same ruthless dictator that had previously been replaced by the new ruthless dictator. And the West oh. then continued all yes. the way up the Korean Peninsula. At this point, China was getting worried that the U.S. Oh, was just no. going. The U.S. had sent this guy to lead the operation. After winning the... Why do his legs look like that? His legs are like... Twice, like three times the size of his, the rest of his body. Pacific Theater of World War II, General Douglas MacArthur's head was big and his balls were bigger. He reassured President Truman that there was absolutely... Oh yeah. Um, whenever, whenever China was going, whenever China helps North Korea, um, whenever China sent support, sent their troops to North Korea to help defeat South Korea, MacArthur, he suggested literally nuking China so they couldn't do that, which is a bit ridiculous. That the Chinese would ever get involved. Meanwhile, half a million Chinese troops were crossing into Korea. Nuke them. No. Oh, I just said it. Nuke them. No. Ah, oh, come on. You're fired. The U.S. considered the nuclear option, but now that the Soviets also had the bomb, they didn't want to risk all that global destruction. The communists pushed the West right back almost to the exact same spot they had all started from, and they ended up eh? in a stalemate, where they remained until both sides finally agreed to work towards a peace settlement. Why? Oh my god. In 2018, back in a Jeez. America, Americans decided they wanted a new president who would be tough on communism, so they elected famed World War II general Eisenhower, Eisenhower. who was really hard to draw. Oh my gosh, what the heck. The first attempt looks- the first attempt actually looks fine though, but this, the second one- don't- please don't use that one. It's 1953. Hey Stalin, how you doing? Oh, he's dead. He had a cerebral hemorrhage and his reign of terror kinda came back to bite him in the ass, because he had imprisoned all of his best doctors, and those that were left were too terrified to treat him. Why? The new leader, Nikita Khrushchev, called a meeting and said, Hey guys, you know how Stalin was a prisoner? Oh yeah, de-Stalinization. Stalinization. Statues of Stalin were taken down, Stalingrad was renamed, and Khrushchev announced that he wanted the Soviet people to be happy and would allow greater freedom in the Soviet Union. So how did that work out? Well, an uprising in East Germany was brutally suppressed, a revolution in Hungary was brutally suppressed, and demonstrations in Poland were brutally suppressed. And Czechoslovakia. Although finally allow some mild reform. Back in the Soviet... What about Czechoslovakia? That was a pretty good thing. That was a pretty big thing, or is that later on? 
opinion, he permitted more cultural expression, but then began banning stuff based on his own personal taste. Modern art looks like a child urinated on a canvas. Banned. Japanese music sounds like the feel. Okay, well, I think they banned modern art. Because what some artists were doing, they would like. They would sort of like draw stuff to a rep. I don't know. They would like sort of had have a metaphor in their art to say to basically indirectly um, object to their regime and on, and the 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 Soviet Union like officials. They couldn't really figure that out because. Modern art just looks weird. But yeah, I I think maybe that's why. Feeling of needing. I explained that really weird, but hopefully I'll understand. Bart, Dan, your poetry is really depressing. How could anyone in the Soviet Union be depressed? You're banned. Khrushchev wanted the Soviet people to be happy, but not like that, or that, or that. Yeah, the poetry thing is probably the same. Um, it it could have definitely had to do with trying to object to the Soviet Union without getting in trouble because you don't understand. Young people began enjoying a born Western pop culture. What is that haircut? What are those clothes? Done. Remove that disgusting imperialist apparel at once. Shut up, Dad. You can't tell me what to do. Well, would you look at that? Turns out he can tell me what to do. Oh, goodness. The West had initially liked the cut of Khrushchev's jib. It's kind of weird, though. Like, you hear about that, how the people in the Soviet Union, they wanted... Um, they liked the West, and they wanted those same freedoms that the West had. And now, nowadays, and there's like this communist nostalgia, and everyone wants to... Um, be communist again and bring back the Soviet Union or become communist or whatever country that is. Which is a bit ridiculous because, you know, kind of caused the collapse of your country, but, you, you know, I, I don't understand. But world events soon soured relations even more. The two sides were spying on each other a whole lot throughout the Cold War. The KGB had spies and informants in nearly every aspect of Western life and government, so much so that whenever the U.S. tried to send spies into the Soviet Union, the KGB were usually ready to arrest them on the spot. Members of the Manhattan Project aided the mm. Soviet Union in acquiring the bomb. Some American officials believed they were on the wrong side. I'll tell you three secrets for five million dollars. Okay, go ahead. The Allies are digging a tunnel under East Berlin to tap your community. Vacations. There's an American agent living at this address in Moscow, and sometimes, when I'm home alone, I like to put on my wife's dresses, sit in the corner, and cry for hours. Well, that's just sad. Jeez. Very interesting. In America, fear took hold during the Red Scare and the McCarthy trial. American values imploded as fear of communism collided with freedom of thought and expression, and communists kind of became a buzzword thrown around to describe anything people didn't like. Hollywood? Communist. Yeah, I, I saw this... I saw this photo. I saw this photo of of this woman of this woman carrying a sign from like decades ago that said "racial mixing is communism." I mean, but I guess this is why. Your next door neighbor's dog, communist. When the grocery store cashier asks if you need a bag when you clearly can't carry ten tubs of bacon in your hands, communist. But one area in particular where the U.S. had an edge over the Soviet Union was in its espionage technology. In particular, U-2 spy planes flew across Russia carrying out surveillance from the skies. There was a nasty incident in 1960, though, when one was shot down and Khrushchev was furious. Who the hell is this? He's a high-altitude weather enthusiast who flew off course. Okay, that sounds plausible. Wait a minute. Why does he have a gun and a poison needle? Because he's a very naughty high-altitude weather enthusiast. But much to America's concern, this Wait, but did that actually happen? The Soviet Union appeared to be ahead in the space race. Everyone freaked out when Russia launched the world's first satellite, and then oh. they actually sent a man into space. Even worse, there also appeared to be a missile gap in the Soviets' favor, and Khrushchev was so confident that he... Well, not by that much. ...even allowed the U.S. to set up a technology exhibit in Moscow, attended by a certain Vice President, Richard Nixon. Check this out. We have color TV. Yes, but we've been to space and obliterate you with our massive nuclear arsenal.
Check out this vegetable peeler. Tensions increased further when both sides upgraded their wow. atomic bombs to hydrogen bombs. And after West Germany was allowed to join NATO in 1955, Khrushchev set up the... They weren't allowed to join NATO? That's a bit ridiculous. The Defense of Warsaw Pact, strengthening the military ties between the Soviet Union and its satellite states. 1960, Americans decided they wanted a new president who... I wish you would explain the, um, Albania and Yugoslavia and their relation to the Warsaw Pact. ...would be tough on communism. So they elected John F. Kennedy. The Soviet they got assassinated. Was technology, but it was also bleeding its coffers dry, and all of the money was going towards the military, not the people. Life under communism was still as hard as ever, and Berlin remained a thorn in the Soviet side. The contrast between the economically prosperous West and the struggling East was clearer day by day. When does the Berlin Wall happen? Or did I already skip past that? And East Berliners were still able to freely travel to the West. Now, many of them were deciding to stay there. Millions defected to West Germany by a West... Millions? The population of Berlin right now is like 3 million now. Oh, millions defected. Berlin, causing eastern factories to lose workers and taking a heavy toll on the economy. Soviet leaders decided this couldn't continue any longer. First, Khrushchev tried this. Leave West Berlin, or else. Or else what? Or else, I'll be really mad at you. Yeah, no, we're gonna stay. Listen, man, West Berlin is ours, East Berlin is yours. That's just how it is. Kennedy felt pretty good about his show of American result, but wait a second. You catch that? Let's replay it. Uh oh, Kennedy just told Khrushchev that the USA wouldn't interfere in what the Soviets did with their section of Berlin, so Khrushchev came up with a new idea. We're gonna build a wall, and it's gonna be a big, beautiful wall, and it's gonna keep out all the Mexicans. Oh, sorry, it's going to keep in all the Mexicans. <laughs> On August 13th, 1961, Berliners woke up to find their city divided into two, with barbed wire and guards blocking the border between east and west. Over time, a wall was constructed throughout the city. Families were torn apart. Thousands would risk their lives escaping over the wall, and hundreds would die trying. To the despair of Berliners, the West were unable to do anything about it, but the wall did put on full display the failure of the communist system. As Kennedy said, democracy is not perfect. We have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in. Wow, that's actually that's actually a pretty cool speech. I'm not gonna lie. As part of the agreement between the two sides, U.S. diplomats were still allowed to travel to East Berlin. But suddenly, East Berlin crossing guards started giving them the business, and Kennedy was like, "Nah." -uh. In October, the U.S. rolled tanks up to the crossing point at. Ch what was that? Business, and Kennedy was like. Nuh uh. In October, the US <laughs> rolled tanks up to the crossing point at Checkpoint Charlie as a show of strength. The Soviets did the same, and the two were in a standoff. They stayed like that for 16 hours, and the world braced for nuclear Armageddon. Thankfully, though, Kennedy called Khrushchev directly and was like, Hey man, this is getting way too hot. How about you back your tanks up by an inch and we'll do the same? Sounds good. Okay, how about you back your tanks up by another inch and we'll follow suit? Alright, hey, do you want to do another inch? And they both very slowly inched away from the apocalypse. You, let's. Oh, what actually happened? Like, what did they say? So that's the biggest crisis of my presidency. No. It wasn't. Are they referring to him getting assassinated? Okay, anyways. Um. Or when does the um nuclear missile Cuba crisis happen? Whatever it's called. The Cuban Missile Crisis. Um. Is he still alive when that happens? Because, I don't know, well, all this stuff happened, like, it just told us all this stuff happened while Kennedy was president. But he got assassinated. Like, he wasn't president for too long. Like, how did he do all this stuff? Anyways. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Oh my gosh, hurry, right, it's really early in the morning. But, yeah. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, I think like 95% of y'all aren't subscribed. So yeah, subscribe, and then that would be really cool. Um, but yeah. Goodbye.